Holy shit. All right. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so, Shannon's already a few minutes late, so she asked me to kind of start with introductions and things. Um, so, uh, the design club, of which I know some of you guys have been to meetings, um, is basically a student-run club that I'm sure you've all heard about and been nagged about to come to meetings. Anyway, um, one of the things that was discussed in the Design Club was, oh, I wish we got a chance to learn more about illustration. To which I replied, okay, well, we can bring in someone to talk more about illustration. So, um, tonight we are uh, pleased to have <laughs> Jamie Noguchi, <laughs> this guy. Uh, Jamie's been a professional comic book artist, colorist, illustrator, and uh, is a published comic book artist. Not to mention... Um, is known as, what was it, Time Magazine's uh, Top 10 Graphic Novels of 2008? 2007. Seven. Seven. <laughs> uh, and also the creator of such wonderful, lovable toys as Puppy Cow. The puppy with cow hunters. So, um... <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> I'm really concerned I can about the job. <laughs> so anyway, um, um, he's here to come and, and uh, teach you guys whatever you want to learn. So he has a presentation, but by all means, please ask questions and, and make it make it the presentation that you want it to be. So if you have questions, do ask them. Um, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Jamie. All right. Um, so I put together a horrible PowerPoint presentation to show some of the work and um, why Ross asked me here and stuff. So um, this is a resume bullshit slide, I guess. Um, but I've been working as a, a multimedia specialist since 2000. Uh, that's a fancy word for somebody who doesn't really specialize in anything but can do a whole bunch of stuff like animation and coding and um, modeling and illustration, animation, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've used many versions of Photoshop uh, back when Mac OS 8.5 was out, which is a terrible thing. Um, I was a colorist for two years. Um, I've published a few books uh, as an independent artist, so not with like a major publishing house. Um, Earthworld, which was an a online comic that uh, I no longer do. <laughs> um, and then this is my own uh, self-published book here. Um, of my current work. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Super Art Fight, which is the greatest live art, art, event. art event, what the, in, f known universe. in the known universe, right. Uh, and the creator of Puppy Cow, which is the most important thing that I've ever done, so. Um, so here's some uh, work that I've done before. Um, so I used to work at this e-learning company, and if you work in the government or any big corporation type thing, they put you through these training courses, and a lot of them occur online through a browser or something like that. So this e-learning company I worked at was a subcontractor for uh, government agencies to teach them about like um, public safety, hazardous uh, materials. Uh, this particular lesson plan was on gun safety. Um, so I actually had, for about a week, uh, a Beretta disassembled on my desk, which is kind of scary because I'm not really a gun person. Um, but I learned how to strip it and put it together and model it and all that kind of stuff. And so we made these um, rich interactions for quizzes and things like that. Um, this is a Mossberg shotgun that I also got to play with. But um, I did not enjoy the work there, so I quit. And um, I got a contracting job um, on site at NASA. Um, which is some of the stuff here. Um, if you go to the NASA homepage right now, the, the two little naviga navigation buttons that are highlighted are the ones that I drew. Um, I tried to incorporate as much illustration in my work um, at NASA as I could. Um, the, uh, the mobile style for the, the NASA website isn't terribly exciting, but it's something that I got to design, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, an interesting thing, I designed a style for them for the, the main article, so when you click on a link, it'll take you to a main article, and this is what it's supposed to look like. But, of course, when you click on it, it just takes you to a version of the entire site, 
which is useless on a, on a cell phone. So the client is always wrong. Um, here are some other things that I did. Uh, this is a, a 50th anniversary piece that I did. Uh, well, my team did. Um, we created these uh, little um, museum pieces for each decade of NASA and filled them with objects related to that decade. Uh, this is the 60s, and we have a, a whole bunch of stuff. My brain isn't working, so I don't remember. Um, is the, robot from the, 60s? the robot is definitely from the 60s. Um, the robot is a, a, a little avatar that I got to create and model and animate and voice and stuff. So um, we won uh, an Adobe Max award, which I guess means something to some people, but I, I don't even know how they did that. Um, uh, this is a um, the WB-57. It's a high altitude aircraft. Uh, I actually got to go to the, the hangar and get a tour of the aircraft, take a few photos, and then um, went home and modeled uh, the aircraft in 3D and created this whole presentation where you could break apart the different payload bays where you can load experiments and things like that. So um, let's see. Uh, other stuff, this is a illustrated feature that um, I did for Galileo. Whenever I could, I tried to draw as much as I could at NASA because I really I didn't enjoy the work, but I tried to I tried to um, put as much of my my own style into what we were doing because it's I mean it sounds like a really cool job, but it's still for a federal agency, so you have all these people above you that have to approve what you do, and so there's all these layers of bureaucracy that kind of get in the way of good design or things that you want to do. So, um, but whenever I could, I tried to you know throw in cartoons or some illustrations there. Um, I did some motion comics because they didn't know what motion comics were and they didn't tell me no. So I did a whole motion comic series on the anniversary of Apollo. Um, I left that job before I finished the last two. So um, I didn't get to finish the entire set, but I did most of the motion comics for that feature. And um, got to do an infographic because again, they didn't know what one was. So I was like, okay, this looks cool. Um, all right, so uh, here's some freelance stuff that I've done since then. Um, this is for a company called Robot Media. They specialize in um, taking comics and putting them on mobile devices. Um, they're also into uh, mobile publishing. They're going to start up a, a, a kids' division, I think, sometime soon. And um, I got to design their mascot. And um, the interesting thing about this company is that every employee gets their own version of the mascot. So I designed all sorts of different versions of them. There's like a there's like alien version. There's a Cylon version. Um, one of them has the Barcelona, uh, the jersey for the Barcelona soccer team because they're in Spain. So football is really big. Uh, and this is the Christmas version for the holidays. Um, because I did logo work for them, um, I got in touch with another group um, that it's a, I guess it's an Android blog that specializes in Android related news and reviews and things like that. So the ninja is sort of their mascot. And then I did all these little cute iterations of it doing other stuff. Um, this is a tribute piece for the Street Fighter art book, because um, Chun-Li should be a rocker. Uh, these are some t-shirt designs. Um, I don't do as many shirts as Ross does, but I do a couple. These are some of the ones that I like. Um, the robot is uh, my take on a, a giant robot series from like the 60s and 70s in Japan. And then the wave is inspired by Hokusai's uh, Great Wave of Kanagawa. So some people got upset that I did this, but really snobby fucks. <laughs> um, uh, these are covers I did for a comic book um, that a friend of mine writes. It's um, kind of a futuristic science fiction tale. Um, the, uh, the one on the right, that's supposed to be a... So there's a scene in the book where a construction worker gets his chest ripped open, and I thought that would be a fun thing to put on the cover. So I did. And uh, you could see the reflection of the person in, in blood, which is always good. Uh, and then this is a, a print ad I did for Earthworld, which is a, um, a webcomic that I worked on for 
two and a half years. Um, it's still going now. They've got a new artist working on it, but um, it sort of had this cute style with it. Um, but all these horrific things going on, like cute little animals killing each other in a great big war, uh, which is always a pain in the ass because you have to draw all these little things and you have to fight with each other and stuff. So, um, I don't sleep much because uh, I have a full-time day job and I do do work on the side, whether it's freelance or, or stuff for myself. So these are more personal things that I work on. Um, most of my time is spent on my webcomic, uh, Yellow Peril, and this is uh, the latest update. Um, it's, uh, I, I do this traditionally, so I do everything on uh, sheets of Bristol, uh, pencil it, and then ink it with a brush, and then do ink washes, scan that in, and then publish it digitally because it's easier to get out to people. Um, so even though I do most of my work in Photoshop, I do my comic all by hand and stuff. Uh, these are prints that I did that are related to the comic. These started out as ink drawings on paper, and then I scanned them in and colored them in Photoshop. So, um, But I also do draw just digitally. Uh, this is a little sketch that I did, uh, Killer Croc and Harley Quinn playing chess, because Killer Croc is a great intellectual that nobody knows. Um, and then... Um, I've been starting to, to stream online um, drawings that I do, sketches that I do. Um, I'm starting a common writer series. So every Thursday night from 11 p.m. till I fall asleep, I uh, broadcast um, drawings and stuff. Um, and then this is just a cute little monster thingy because monsters are cute. All right, so any questions? Awesome. Uh, all right, so um, I am going to do a, a little demonstration of um, just a, a sketch, I guess. Uh, I was thinking I would do something painterly. I don't know if anybody has a preference, but um, if you have any questions as I go, I tend to paint faster than I talk, so I might not explain everything that's going on. Um, but this is a uh, 2,000 by 2,000 pixel canvas. Um, it's not exactly print resolution, but um, it's good enough for demonstration purposes. And uh, let's see, I like to turn on the navigator because you get a small window of what you're working on here. Um, if I had two monitors, I would have the navigator on this monitor and my workspace over here so I could zoom in really big and zoom in out and not have to stand back. When you're, when you're doing illustration, it helps sometimes to stand back away from your piece and just see how things are interacting with each other and if your composition is good. Um, but since it's all on the machine, um, you know, you can either zoom out, zoom in, or you could just set up this little navigator window here. Now it does take up some space, uh, valuable real estate, as they say, but, um, all right, so I've had this idea for a illustration I wanted to do for a while. And, uh, um, oh, I'm using this uh, Wacom, Wacom Intuos 3 tablet that you guys have in the back closet. Um, it's a really good tablet. Uh, the one I have normally is this piece of shit Intuos 2. You'll notice many differences. This one is used, this one isn't. Um, but besides that, there are all these buttons on the side which make things a lot easier. Typically when you see people working with these older tablets, they look like this because their hands are on the keyboard and they're, they're painting down here, which is kind of, gives you arm fatigue unless you're really buff, and I'm not, so um, it's much easier to have these buttons down here where the action is happening in your lap. So, um, what kind of brush? Oh, uh, this is just a, a chalk brush. Um, I have all these brushes that I don't use. This is not always helpful, but this is just a basic chalk brush um, with uh, stuff turned on. So I'm going to do... Um, can, can you show real quick the brushes? Um, not that one, the one that shows you where you can set the pressure sensitivity. To oh, the um, this little menu here. Whoops. 
not that one. <laughs> it's normally up here. <laughs> I broke my Photoshop. Because I don't use that ever. <laughs> Thanks a lot, oh, um, Ross. No, nothing. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, now. Um, there there we go. Okay. All right, so here's uh, where you set all the dynamics and stuff. I never use it, which is why I look like an idiot right now. Here, just click on Shape Dynamics. Uh, and here you go. Do you mind them coming up? So, uh, because it's hooked up to a Wacom tablet, and a Wacom tablet can tell how hard you're pressing down, you can set it to pick up pen pressure, and you can set it so it makes a, a stronger line, like a bigger line, or you can set it to do a darker line, or you can set it to do both or neither, whichever way you want. So he's got his set up right now, so it does a thicker line when he presses down harder. That's the size is controlled by pen pressure, is that, is that one there? But really it just butts with it until you come up with something like that. Yeah. Thanks. That took me a while to find, too. That's <laughs> well, one of those things, once you turn on once, you really don't think about it that much, but you've never used it before, you're thinking about it, that's where it is. All right, so, um, I don't know, how many of you are uh, illustrators or sketchers or people who draw and stuff? So doing it on the computer is basically like doing it on paper, except you get to cheat a lot. Um, you don't have to, you can undo as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, and since I don't have too much time, I'm just going to concentrate on a, a little portrait here. Um, so normally when I draw Anyway, I, I just start off with like a basic sketch, um, a couple landmarks to get in the proportions correctly, like the eyes are usually halfway between the top of your head and all that, ears and stuff. Um, sometimes I exaggerate proportions. I'm going to paint over all of this. Right now, this brush doesn't have any opacity to it, so um, it's working as if I was using a Sharpie. I'm just drawing down lines and stuff. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about this all day, Ross. Yeah. That's where that thing came from. <laughs> I wanted to do a, a, a more proper represent, representation. No, no, I can make that up. <laughs> you do look like an old man. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Shit. Any questions? Um, yeah, free transform. It is extremely weird. Yeah. This is a. This is not a thing that people are meant to do when they're drawing. This is dumb. Um, so there is, a, there, is a, there is a disconnect, and it does take a while to get used to this. Um, I, I, I learned on the job, my first job, the e-learning place, everybody had tablets, and everybody was encouraged to use the tablets while they were working. So um, I had this really big, ugly one, and I had to go like this when I was drawing. Um, but I got used to it after like a good couple months. It took a while. Um, they do make ones where you can just draw on the screen. Um, they're not portable. Yes. And not yeah, and yeah, the the little one. I have the little one. That is not portable. Don't let anybody tell you that it is. People say, "Oh, I bought the little one because I could take it on the road." No, you fucking can't. You have this big <laughs> power block, and the cord, and it's fucking idiots. So, um, yeah. So if you're gonna get one, get the big one. Don't bother with the little one. I have the little one. Does anyone remember what Brandon said when he was uh, there in your literacy? We can talk about that one. It's very furious. 
He said, if you make yourself use it for two weeks straight, like do everything with it that you're doing on your computer for about two weeks, then you get past it. Yeah, it's true. Like I, I use this as my mouse now. Um, so. It also is much better for your wrist. If you at all are feeling like your wrist hurts from using a mouse so much, um, you might seriously want to consider a wake-up tablet because it really saves your wrist. Um, not to mention, if you're doing, obviously drawing, but... If you've ever had to cut something out in Photoshop, like with the lasso tool or something, you can do it so much faster with uh, Wacom than you can with, with the mouse. Really, the most simple drawings become like infinitely easier. How is that me? I don't know what you're talking about. It's you as an old, withery, angry design professor. <laughs> This is you in like 30 years. Get this right. <laughs> that is totally something you say. <laughs> All the time. I've said that in my life. <laughs> All the time. That's all Ross says to me. He's like, these mother bitches don't kern. I'm always saying that. You're always saying that. Alright, so um, I'm just going to start painting in shit now. I have, a, I have a basic framework to work off of. Um, so a lot of this, I, I usually, when I start a digital painting, um, I usually start black and white because it's easier to build values and not have to worry about hues and tones and temperature and all that kind of stuff. Just straight black and white. And then when I get to a certain point, I'm happy with the direction I'm going. Then I'll start throwing on color and uh, do all the fancy Photoshop-y stuff. Um, so it's kind of like a, a watercolor workflow. If any of you do watercolors? And uh, for this I will use uh, some big ass brushes. The problem with all these things in the palette is that you have too many to choose from. So. Honestly, when I'm working, I usually keep it to like these three, he these two here, and then this one over here, and then the rest of this stuff is like finishing crap that I use like once, a once a year. Yeah, butterflies are very important, especially when drawing Ross. <laughs> So I'm not really concerned with staying inside the lines because I can paint out any mistakes. Um, and I, I usually throw on a, a base tone. Uh, we'll just set this to multiply and make life easier and turn this shit down. Um, uh, I'm probably going to do the glasses on a separate layer, so I'll just render the face details up. And then at some point I'll flatten it all down and then keep going from there. But, um, so how is it that it's painting darker over itself when you've got the opacity of it set to 100? Oh, um, so this is where the pressure sensitivity comes into play. Um, the, the harder I press, ooh, shit happens. Um, the, the harder I press down, the darker the mark is, the lighter I press, um, the lighter it is. So um, that's one advantage of using um, a tablet over painting with a mouse. Now. 
there are some amazing talented artists who do use a mouse to color. Um, Adam Hughes, I don't know if there are any DC fans here, um, but one of the guys who does a lot of the, the good girl covers, like uh, Wonder Woman and Catwoman, um, I think he's doing Batgirl covers now. He colors completely with a mouse, and it looks like these painterly portraits and stuff, and it's really irritating because no one knows how he fucking does it. But he uses a mouse, and he's used a mouse for years, and he gets paid like 300 bucks a sketch at cons. So it's not the tools. It's not. It's never the tools. Don't let anybody tell you that. So. so right now I'm just blocking in forms. Um, if you look on the left, um, it's kind of what I'm going off of, just trying to get in the, the, the major areas of light to block in so that it looks like something when I squint, squint test. Um, not worried about details, just worrying about shapes and uh, how light falls and all that kind of stuff. So the navigator is like natural light or what is that? What's the point of getting Oh, um, just so I don't have to zoom out all the time to, okay. to get a bigger view. Because um, eventually I'll start working up this close mm -hmm. and, and uh, to see how it's, what I'm doing is affecting the piece. I have the navigator up here. Um, so that takes the place of a, a second screen. Um, unfortunately, there's no HTML navigator. Now. <laughs> At a time? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm lucky if four people show up. <laughs> I'll stick to it. But, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, like, I'm up. Might as well. Might as well yeah, might as well broadcast. Because then I can um, take that video and, and create a time lapse of it and then stick that up on my channel and stuff. So, it's like, I'd be up anyway, dicking around on Photoshop. Might as well do something useful with it. Have you guys seen the Super Art Fan? A couple from last semester. What? Oh, well, if you have any questions about that, so you, you, he's the one that came up with it. I just, I just joined in. Coattails. Yeah. <laughs> you can't let me near a microphone. Especially in front of 12 year olds. Hey, that was at a fucking college show. <laughs> that little bastard knew what she was getting into. There's a 12 year old at a, we had a college show. Yeah, at UNBC. There was, and we gave Jamie a microphone. And you can assume how that went. <laughs> I'm for holding his tongue. Don't start no one won't be. Those are fucking kids. Are you like this at work too? Yes. Uh, so as I go around and add details, uh, the brush size gets a little smaller or larger depending on um, what I'm working on. This kind of looks messy and choppy and stuff, but that's all right. Um, so how are you switching brushes like that? Or are you just changing size? I'm just changing size. Um, yeah, even though I set it up here, I should be working out on this. What button are you using to changing size? I, I know on the Wacom, but... Um, it's the uh, brackets. Uh -huh. what, what are you putting over on the other side? Uh, this thing? Oh, you're just switching back and forth? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll save a color on the background and mm -hmm. swap them out. Gotcha. Alright, so I'll just collapse this.
start painting on top now. And I'll worry about the glasses as I go. Um, so uh, some people will create a new layer every time they, they finish something. Um, and so you'll have a finished piece of like 20 layers. Um, I just collapse all that shit because it takes up a lot of space and then I forget where things are and then I lose stuff. So uh, I try to keep as few layers as possible when I'm working on something. Um, and then have like specific layers for like effects and things like that. Um, if I have highlights, sometimes I want them on, sometimes I want them off. You know, Photoshop lets you screw around a lot and uh, get away from the realities of actually working on paint. Because you can't always do it. Do you go to school for art? Uh, um, I went to the University of Maryland, College Park, um, and they didn't really have a digital art program at the time. Well, they did, but it was like, let's make a collage in Photoshop. Mm. Um, so uh, most of this stuff I picked up on my own, um, just practice and practice and not sleeping. Mostly not sleeping. How many hours of sleep do you get in that, Jamie? Like, I don't know, four or five on a good day. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, like, it depends on what you want to do. Like, I, my main goal is to eventually do comics for a living. And the only way to do that is to produce and to get your stuff out there. So if that's what you want to do, um, and if you want to, you know, work for yourself, you gotta hustle. If you're fine doing a, a day job and you get a design job and you like it, well then, you know, you're set. Unless it's crunch time, you know, you might have to come in for some extra hours. But if you find, if you find a day job that suits you and, you know, you can do anything you want and, and it's, it's all that you imagined, then you are one of those lucky few. The rest of us forego sleep. Except Ross. Ross sleeps all the time. <laughs> I'm too busy scowling. <laughs> <laughs> scowling like a boss. Yeah, let's put in some darker. Oh, um, the other thing, um, when I pick colors, I always pick from the color picker. I rarely use... Uh, the swatches because they're all saturated and fun and yay! Uh, these aren't very useful unless you're working on the web which is great for you guys. It's terrible for me. Because um, web, web safe doesn't necessarily translate to a good illustration. So um, I go with uh, what my eye responds to here. So I have infinite um, possibilities and all this stuff. There's some other modes um, that people use like a what is this? There's HLV or lab color. Lab color does some weird things when colors interact with each other. I haven't played around with it enough to understand exactly what it does. But um, if you really want to challenge yourself, start painting in lab color. It'll just blow you away, <laughs> and you'll throw your Wacom pen. Um, so someday when I uh, get brave enough, I'll I'll start doing it. Somewhere? I don't know. I, I don't know enough about it, but there's there's a different de definite difference. Like when you do um, burns and uh, dodges, that's when you can really tell the difference. Very upset. 
that people aren't kerning. <laughs> But also, um, extreme expressions like scowling or, or surprise or anything like that, those are just more fun to draw than like um, plain, plain expressions because you get to play with the muscles and the, all the features and you get to like dig creases into faces and things like that. So um, I find that uh, I sketch a lot of angry people. One of our friends, Kelsey, she draws some really fucked up faces. Um, but you can you can tell that there's musculature and and there's bone and, and there's muscle underneath all those weird faces. So, um, you know, if you want to really study how muscles move in your face, make a lot of crazy faces. Do you have the uh, the uh, figure drawing tool in its workbook? No. No. Wait, is that the Lumens one? Yeah. Oh wait, I do have that one. Oh. I did pick that up. From your, um, I heard about it on your now defunct podcast. It's not defunct, I just stopped listening. Yeah. Stop listening. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so it's basically kind of sucked. Yes. Stop listening. It was not your best. Alright, now we're starting to look like a fucking angry person. I'm not happy with this, but whatever. Um, uh, there are a couple of features that I normally leave out uh, in these stages, like hair, um, beards and stuff, because uh, they tend to, to cover a lot of features. Um, so I, I try to get the, the, the forms as basic as I can, and then um, as I add more detail, that's when I start adding in more uh, of the, the um, finer details like hair and pock marks. Hey. <laughs> Maybe you're bad at shaving at this age, I don't know. Too busy telling people to turn. Kern. I can't shave, they're not kerning right, man. Why am I living in the south? Man! <laughs> My name's Ross, man. <laughs> Ross Nuller. What? Warn them that you brought an insane person to show them Not fucking her. <laughs> Starting to look like Martian Manhunter. Alright, if you want to see something really horrendous, flip your work. So let's do it. Oops. <laughs> that was horrendous. <laughs> there we go. Um, it's always a good idea to flip your work when you're working on stuff. There way you can uh, check proportion and a couple errors. Um, other things that you can do when you're in Photoshop, the liquify tool. It lets you move features around. Um, make the brush bigger. If you want to change shapes and stuff. I'd say do a lot of photoshopping and um, like Cosmo covers and stuff like that. This is 
what, yeah, this is more what I was going for. <laughs> Kerning is serious fucking business. <laughs> Um, I mean, I know how to, I know my way around Photoshop so that I can make iterations of things pretty easily, but, um, I don't know, I just, I don't know. Since my focus is primarily illustration, um, most of my client work is based on that. All right, so let's collapse this all down, and then let's start adding color. Now, um, one of the nice things about Photoshop is that you can add color fairly easily. One of the fun tricks that I like to do, um, I'll just make a new layer just in case I hate what I'm about to do, um, is uh, the... No, I'm looking for it. It's not here. What's it called? Gradient map. Oh, it's in um, layer effects. There we go. Okay. New adjustment layer. All right, so what gradient map does is it uh, maps uh, certain colors throughout your range of hues. So the left gets assigned to the dark colors, the right gets assigned to the lighter colors, which is why it looks negative right now, because we have a, a bright color in our dark area and a dark color in our bright area. So if we do something like this, this looks more like it is. You can screw around, like come up with a bunch of quick iterations of color temperatures and things like that. Um, another fun thing to do is hit the noise filter and then just go randomize and see what wacky stuff you can come up with. Sometimes if your, your black and white illustration is tight enough, you can just do this all day, come up with something you like, and you're done. But we're not going to do that. That is not what we want. All right, so uh, more like a mid-fleshy tone. Maybe something up here. All right, so it looks like I've done a lot of work, but really it's all this layer. Um, and it's pulling out some brush strokes that kind of faded as I was messing around. So this is a great way of not only um, coloring your entire piece quickly, but pulling out details that you wanted to, that you didn't know were there, and that you kind of want to play around with. This also gives me a lot of range of tones to play with when I go in and, and um, paint with color. So I'm just gonna, Flatten that, rotate again, there we go. And uh, I'm going to start painting on another layer. Um, there's really no rhyme and reason where I put stuff. Um, in terms of color choices, um, shadows I like to put in a lot of blues and uh, grays to kind of desaturate and to push those areas back. Um, because cool colors tend, tend to recede in your composition. Um, and when I'm dealing with highlights, I tend to use um, yellows and reds and things like that because uh, those attract your eye and, and pull things towards your composition. So you're rounding out figures with color and temperature and light and all that kind of stuff. So that's why this ugly ass blue is going on, right?
Yep. It's terrible. It's terribly ugly. Yeah. So, um, because you're using layers, don't be afraid to, to go too extreme. Like, if you look in here now, he looks like he's going to puke. Um, but, you know, this, this is a good way of, of getting, like, okay, so these are the cool areas of, of the face. These are the, the parts that I want to work in shadow. Um, and to kind of less uglify it, I just tone it down a little bit, blend it in naturally, and then you just, you know, drop it down. So it doesn't look so gross. Um, and you can just start pulling out different hues and shades and things like that. Do you try and make all the uh, textures more smooth? No, I'm just putting in um, like hits of color where. Another thing you can play with are the blend uh, blend modes. Um, so sometimes that helps. Like if this was normal, you'd see this blue mist going on. But uh, since it's overlay, you just get a little bit of a darkness going on here. So there it is with it, there's without it. It's a little bit deeper. Are there any questions as I uh, kind of jump through this thing? What's that, Michael? 
What? Oh, the butterflies. <laughs> we can make that a background element. That is not a high resolution brush. <laughs> there you go. Butterflies. Ah, damn, now that brush is on. <laughs> You could. It would look like ass. <laughs> that would be a good. That would be a good art fight. If we could do it digitally. <laughs> Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, it's How a come thing. we haven't stolen that? <laughs> you wanna steal? Oh, um, yeah, um, so um, when I'm done with the layer and I think I've got it to where I, I like it, what I'll do is I'll um, drop it down to it's all solid one, like one thing now. Um, uh, some people just keep going and every time they add a new detail, they'll just add, add more and more stuff. I get lost, so I like to keep it. or it didn't happen. <laughs> there is no explanation for Puppy Cow. Um, puppy Cow was a, a stupid little sketch that I came up with um, at a convention. And um, a lot of my friends said, oh, you should turn this into a toy. And I told them they were all full of shit, but uh, <laughs> I put it on Kickstarter and enough people wanted it, so. So now how many exist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's a> <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's actually fatter now than she was. That was two years ago. Why did you fear so much? <laughs>
Did you start out um, Puss Puss? Uh, not yet. I have a friend that, um, Aaron, um, from, uh, from Gamex, that horrible con, he, um, he was interested in doing a Puss Puss sculpt. So that might be a figure. Puss Puss was like the follow-up. He was a uh, part cat, part octopus. I was proud of that name. It's pretty good. These are the things that occur at conventions. <laughs> All right, so now um, Let's go. you don't have any eyes. You kerned them the shit. <laughs> you kerned your eyes away. That makes no fucking sense. give you some eyes. Your eyes get really small when you're old. <laughs> Really tiny man eyes. <laughs> Brian, I know you wanted to pursue a lot more illustrations, so do you have any questions? Okay. I asked a bunch of questions last night. Okay. What's your favorite color? Uh, I don't. Black. Do you ever use any types of textures or anything like that? Or you all um. I try to paint most of my stuff um, towards the end, like when I want to finish, finish something. Sometimes I'll find some like rocky textures and dump them into like a face and then um, push them back a lot. Um, but I, I try not to rely too much on textures or, or photo textures. I try to, to paint all the, all the, um, all of my stuff because I'm one of those idiots. All the power at my fingertips and I do it the hard way. Um, since I, I don't rely too heavily on effects, I really don't have many um, go-to shortcuts that I use. Uh, for file setup and file preparation, yes. Um, when I scan in my comic, I have a couple actions that um, get it ready for web <laughs> resolution, that kind of thing. So uh, for post-processing, getting the files out to where they need to go, yeah. But in terms of like actual artwork and um, using filters, I, I don't have any standards, so I just wing it. Yeah! Oh, 
Um, this is the dodge tool. Um, I set it on midtones. You could set it to shadows and highlights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they do different things. Play around with it. Your mileage may vary. Um, that taken um, basic photo, it's just like dodging and burning on with actual exposures. Uh, well, that's the idea anyway, that's what it's based on. In theory. Um, Since I don't know shit about photography, I'm just gonna take your word for it. It is. Trust me. I'm old. Gotta have liver spots, so oh, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is the angriest. I'm like most angry. You're the least angry. So, um, Rocco is coming to talk. I'm in next semester. Oh yeah. Can we do the big What's that? Next semester. <laughs> Oh, Michael Brocco. I know, I know that. Mikey's Brocco. <laughs> Old Ross just has a black shirt that has no tone in it. It absorbs all light. It absorbs. Because <laughs> it's black. It is called the light sucker. <laughs> it is called the lazy fucking artist. Called Fred. Fred old man. Fred old man shirt. <laughs> Fucking run with it, Ross. myself included, know how to do the basics of a lot of this stuff. So uh, if you were wanting to do more work, James would be accessible too. It's happy to answer questions. I can do it this way. I don't know where to start. Oh, uh, just, it's just practice. Yep. And time. And lots of caffeine. Well, a lot of soda. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you look fucking pissed, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Now it's time for beard. Uh, so there's this hairbrush that I've got that I use for hair. <laughs> Obviously. Um, because it's one of those things that I hate to draw by hand. Um, so this will... I'll just do lots of layers of this. And I should get this a little bit darker. So why not just black? Um, I, I tend to avoid straight black um, because um, if you uh, go out in the world and you see colors and lights and things, you'll notice that black is just not straight black. It has other hues in it depending on the light and how it interacts with its surroundings. So um, I try to go off of that philosophy when I, I paint with colors. I try to stay away from straight black and straight white. Um, when I'm when I'm doing a digital painting now when I'm doing like a like more cartoony stuff well wow, whatever like black works fine but for this like um, <laughs> oh um that was done in Illustrator. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually just drew it straight up in Illustrator. Like, I did the sketch um, with a, a basic uh, brush in Illustrator, and then, um, you know, did my paths over that. <laughs> uh, Maya. Um, alias, alias Wavefront Maya. I guess it's wave front now um, but yeah it's a it's a 3d it's one of those um, off-the-shelf 3d packages that's for like film and commercials and animation and stuff like that so um, you could do that kind of thing in Photoshop it just takes a lot longer well that's not a true thing to say <laughs> This looks gross. What are you trying to say? You look gross as an old angry man. <laughs> it's not a good look for you, Ross. <laughs> Don't turn out this way. I'll try. <laughs> Jeff Farr. Nah, Ah, the sound of failure. <laughs> That always happens when I crash a machine. <laughs> a weird hairy monster. Brushes that you found, or are they all in Photoshop? Uh, these are these are brushes that I found. Um, Deviant Art. Look at porn and get brushes. <laughs> their their nudity standards are very odd, I find. Deviant Art, and the first thing you see is like naked in your face. <laughs> 
Why? I was looking for brushes. I didn't need naked in my face. <coughs> I mean, you know, there are times when you're looking for it. <coughs> this looks totally different. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it really depends on um, the piece and when I decide I'm tired of it. Um, like, I could go on for a lot longer on this if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> So now glasses time. <laughs> oh right, eyebrows. <laughs> Get um. like a bushy man. Aww. You look sad. Aww. Liquefy to the rescue. <laughs> Photoshop is the shit, yo. <laughs> It was your idea, son. <laughs> it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to dial this down. Is that just a pass? Yeah. Browse, they're in the way too.
actually. Oh, um, so I, I set this to screen instead of normal. So this is what it looks like normal. <laughs> Straight back. Screen. These are, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if I set it to screen and I use uh, just black and white values on that layer, anything that's black will be ignored. Anything that's white will be brighter. Um, so that way I can make this look more like glass. And uh, I can add in highlights and, and things like that. Um, let's see. I'm going to do shit like this make it look like it's reflective. So it doesn't really fit the uh, character of the piece, so that's not going to happen. But maybe I'll do it back here. Back here. More subtle. That shit doesn't look great. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I do. It's really bad. I amuse the cat. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Audrey's asleep. <laughs> so she doesn't have to be subjected to this craziness. Where's the, uh, there we go. All right, so, um, so the basic painting is done. Um, there are a couple of things that I like to do when I finish up a piece just to tighten things up and uh, bring out some more detail. Um, I'll create another layer and merge everything on, on that layer. And then um, sometimes if you do something like auto levels, more high, a more intense color, and then I'll just dial that down a little bit set it to like overlay or soft light or something like that. And then you know I probably should make actions at this point. <laughs> this stuff is um is pretty standard. Oops. Uh fill this layer with uh gray noise add noise. And uh, going on here? Stylize. Am I missing half of my filters? That's weird. Yeah. 
That's very strange. You save this file once. Yeah. I've saved it many times. Oh. Save all the time. So it gives it a little bit of a, a natural grain. Actually, overlay is slightly better. Um, and then one more thing, if I have it. <coughs> there we go. It's an unsharpened mask. And uh, these are the basic settings, so you do that. And um, if, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the edges come out a little bit more, so it's a little bit more. Um, I'll make it a bigger. So you can see the harsher edges there. And then I'll turn that shit down. And, uh,. We're done. No, I usually don't. I always forget. <laughs> you stunned them. <laughs> I guess so. Any uh, general advice? Um, uh, practice, practice, practice. Um, you can, you can do the same thing with a piece of crap tablet. Um, they don't even make this anymore, it's sold. Um, if you can find one, uh, they, I think the bamboo is like, the basic bamboo is like 79, 70 bucks. 70 bucks. Um, it's a good tablet. Uh, Christmas is coming up, so get one for Christmas. Um, they're a lot of fun. It takes a while to get used to it, but when you do, uh, you can do all sorts of crazy shit. Oh, uh, I guess. Okay. I mean, they.